Social media is a really great tool for doing research because it can provide us with a huge amount of data that was related to how people are feeling about what's happening. It can tell us which trends and topics are interesting. It can tell us how people are responding to new government legislation or uh, global issues such as climate change. It can give us a really good understanding of what the population might be thinking. It does have some limitations, of course. Not everybody is on social media. And so we can't apply everything we find there to the entire population. However, it can give us a pretty good idea about what's happening, especially for certain demographics. Doing social media research generally falls into three parts. The process of collecting data, the process of cleaning our data, and the process of analysing our data. The first of these is probably the most difficult. We can collect our data in two different ways. We can either use a pre-existing data set or we can go and get our own. Pre-existing data sets might include things like Google Trends, where we can look at what people are searching for and using the internet for at any given time and compare it to other trends. We might also look at databases held by organisations like Harvard University. Here they've already curated large data sets that we can download and analyse for free. There's nothing wrong with using someone else's data set. Some of these data sets are huge. Harvard have a data set of 40 million tweets related to climate change. And adding our own research question and using that data can yield some really interesting and exciting results. But whenever we're using someone else's data, we are limited by how they've collected it and what data they have. So our alternative is to collect our own data. This is much more difficult. Most social media platforms keep their data locked down. So in order to access it, we either need to spend money or we need to know some perhaps rudimentary coding or find software that enables us to scrape data. It's really important that if you are scraping data from any social media platform, that you're also checking what the terms and conditions are of doing data scraping. Once you've found a tool though to do that, you can set up your own parameters, you can set up your own timeframes, and you can scrape that data. Once you've got your data, it needs to be cleaned. By this, I mean that we need to turn it into a format that we can start to analyze. So this might mean changing uh, the way that the data is stored from perhaps a, a certain type of file to something like a spreadsheet in order to be able to examine it. It might involve uh, removing some parts of the data so that we've only got the data that we need for our analysis. The process of cleaning the data is something that you should write about in your methodology because your choices about what to clean, what to remove and what to keep are important decisions that might affect the analysis of your data. Once you've got your data and once you've got it into the format that you need, then we can do some analysis. It's important that you decide on the type of analysis before you even collect your first bit of data. That way you'll know you're collecting the right stuff. But we can do all kinds of different types of analysis with social media data. We could do content analysis, we can do thematic analysis, or perhaps most commonly, we might look at doing some visual network analysis, where we look at how different people, different themes, different topics, different hashtags link to each other across the internet. Whichever one of these methods you employ, again, you need to take consideration about how you design that analysis and how that analysis will help you answer your research question. It shouldn't just be some beautiful, pretty diagrams. It should be a diagram that informs the reader about what's happening in the world. So social media research can be really powerful. It's not always easy. Guessing the data is hard. Cleaning and analysing the data will involve you having to learn some new software and probably some at least basic computer coding as well. But having said that, if we get it right, 
social media research can offer us some absolutely fantastic insights and a huge, deep and interesting body of data that we can analyze again and again and again. So why not give it a try? Start with something small and then build up to perhaps a bigger project where you're collecting larger and larger data sets. Good luck.